This is No Tears for Black Girls. A Brooklyn mother is mourning her daughter, whom she believes was killed for simply asking people to stop setting off illegal fireworks. It happened in an area plagued by gun violence that only seems to be getting worse. CBS 2's Jenna DeAngelis has more. This story transports us to the notorious pink houses of East New York, where two warring factions have been terrorizing the community for decades. Shatavia Walls, who was allegedly killed by 9D gang members in 2020, was another victim of these ruthless gangs who had a complex history. Caught between the Macballer Brims and 9D gang with their affiliates, Shatavia had already experienced two gunshot wounds to her thigh and faced drug charges. The unforgiving streets of East New York had taken an extreme toll on her until she decided to testify against them. The court convicted her husband Slay, a key member of the Macballer Brims, for trafficking drugs and weapons. Boss, from the Macballer side, had sold crack cocaine and heroin along Webster Avenue. She wasn't a red, and that bastard should never have killed her, said an elder relative. If any motherfucker ever shoots you, go testify against them. However, Shatavia's death was a tragic reminder of the hardships of living in Brooklyn's housing authority complex. This story is one we'll never forget. Shatavia walked through the minefield that was her home. Gangs with allegiances as strong as family bloodlines waged battles, bullets tearing through flesh like tissue paper. Two shots to her thigh and a drug charge were the catalysts for her cooperation with the feds, prompting a decision that cost her life. Walls grew up in pink houses, Building 10, near the 9D gang. She learned too late that Macballer Brims had infiltrated Buildings 7 and 8 on Autumn Avenue, starting a decade-long gang war. Slay, a Macballer's leader, was her spouse, and his criminal life entangled her too. Allegations stated he received his drugs from Boss, another Macballer who sold crack and heroin on Webster Avenue in the Bronx. Any dreams of freedom Shatavia, this union snuffed, may have cherished out. Shatavia Wall's death resulted in charges being brought against those involved, highlighting divisions amongst the Pink House's complex. Rab was supplying many of the Mac ballers, like Broadway, with illegal drugs. Their drug empire extended to Brooklyn and the Bronx and even Maine, where they were pushing heroin. The court allowed wiretaps on phones used by several people involved in the Mac baller situation, confirmed Stunner's position as Dawn, a role of leadership over the whole town. In late December 2017, Slay was appointed to oversee operations in Brooklyn. Through intercepted conversations amongst members of the gang, accounts of guns, violence, and doing whatever necessary to protect their turf arose. For instance, in November 2017, during a series of calls, Slay issued a threat to an individual using a firearm from the pink houses. Stunner then asked Shatavia Walls to bring him a hammer downstairs and he bragged about how close he was to being jailed for having fired his gun. A separate call between Stunner and Broadway discussed ammunition for Broadway's gun because he had to take care of something, meaning something violent. The Mac Baller's resolve to protect their turf was evident as Broadway boasted about obtaining bullets from Stunner's gun. Roach, a Mac Baller brim because of his street notoriety, was the recipient of illicit substances from Boss. Though he had priors for drug offenses since the start of the 2000s, and even once being convicted of second-degree attempted murder in 2011, for which he served six years. On June 18, 2023, he was at 1400 Webster Avenue in the Bronx, an area known as Mac Motherland Butler Houses. Surveillance cameras caught Roach with a firearm on the same street corner that night. As he roamed away from Blink Fitness Gym, four shots were fired in succession. People running away in fear created a chaotic scene in the background. Roach searched for bullet fragments or casings. When New York PD officers arrived, they found a 38-year-old male had been shot in his left ankle. The criminal? Roach. The police retrieved a bullet fragment from the victim's ankle and a shell casing from the sidewalk next to Blink Fitness. This discovery would force Slay Walls, husband of Shatavia, into indictments with the Mac Ballers in 2018. Investigations unveiled Shatavia was an enigmatic figure. Operating as both a drug dealer and a nurturing mother who took care of her aunt, handled multiple jobs, and consorted with authorities when necessary. Unbeknownst to her, such behavior could generate severe repercussions amongst her enemies. The 9D Gang, a criminal faction renowned as the Wise Gang and Very Crispy Gangsters. 
Allegiance with other gangs such as the Shoes, Apes or Stonebloods, Twirlers and Hats gave them further notoriety through rap videos and social media postings led by Kev G, their little big homie. Shaquem was a part of the notorious Loopy Gang, whose affiliations ran deep with the 9D Gang. They shot Shaquem twice in both legs in 2014, and he has had a long list of charges since then. Shaquem has six criminal convictions behind him, four that occurred before he even hit 18 years old. Shaquem grew up in an abusive household with an alcoholic mother and had to fend for himself in the projects. He survived by any means necessary. Lerone ran a major drug distribution network in the pink houses. Keen rolled on the street and reported to Lerone. All that changed on October 5th, 2017, outside the pink houses on Linden Boulevard. Shaquem approached Shatavia with a look of disdain on his face. His crew had beef and he wanted her gone. But then things went south, fast. Her refusal was sufficient for him. He rode off, returning to the scene with a gun in hand. The ambiguity of Shatavia's knowledge didn't deter her from standing her ground. With bold fury, she punched him square in the face before tackling him down. Shaquem hopped back up and shot her twice in the left leg at close range. The investigators found a 40 caliber cartridge casing at the scene. Despite this dire situation, Shatavia would survive, though wounds to both body and pride remained raw. The source of animosity between rival crews was Shatavia's business with Slay the Mac Baller from the other side. However, Walls kept this information hidden from the detectives until she was charged in a drug case along with her husband. She claimed she wanted to get everything out in the open, so she cooperated with the feds despite others labeling her as a snitch. In court, Walls stated, I stand up for myself. She faced intimidating witness testimony, according to prosecutors. News flyers posted on all 22 buildings in pink houses show that Shatavia's reputation as a rat is still alive. As Walls prepared to face trial in the Federal Court of Brooklyn, the flyers highlighted a police report from a 2011 assault case with Walls as a person interviewed in connection to the crime. Seizing one of those flyers, Walls reported to the police, which resulted in one of her adversaries being charged with witness tampering. The court sentenced Keem to nine years in prison for possessing illegal weapons. The residents of Pink Houses confirmed Shatavia's status as a snitch. However, her past seemed to follow her everywhere, even on July 4, 2020, when she got into a confrontation with Malik Miller, known around the hood as Leek, and White Boy, members of the notorious 9D gang. The night started with celebration, but soon turned sour. Walls found herself face to face with Miller and his crew at the playground where the kids were playing. He denounced her for speaking out against Akeem's trial. And then, in an instant, the sound of gunshots pierced the night air. Walls made her retreat. However, Wildchild and Joe Santana from the 9D gang lurked outside in wait. Walls sped away but couldn't evade their vengeance. Candles sit in the courtyard of East New York's Pink Houses, where 33-year-old Shatavia Walls was shot on July 7th, but sadly died 10 days later. On a nearby bench Monday, we met her mother, reflecting and mourning. She asked we hide her identity as her daughter's killer is still out there. My daughter was a, a helping person, always wanted to help everybody. Explaining that's exactly what her daughter was doing here earlier this month. Asking somebody to stop lighting the fireworks because the kids was in the park. They was asked politely. She says days later, as Walls and a friend were leaving the Linden Boulevard building after a visit, they were gunned down. According to police sources, it's believed Walls was the intended target. A 30-year-old man was also shot but survived. And it happened out here, the people from out here. Police sources say they're not ruling out the possibility this was gang-related, pointing out there's a gang issue at this housing complex. Baby Joe Santana had his trial set for the August of 2021. The feds had charged him with multiple counts of murder under the Federal Violent Crimes in Aid of Racketeering Act. And if found guilty, he could spend the next two decades behind bars. Santana was known to hail from Building 10 of the Pink Houses, the home of the 9D gang. But among his most controversial relationships was that of Shatavia Wall's husband, Kevin St. Hill, a.k.a. Kev G., the leader of Mac Baller Brim's gang located in buildings 7 and 8 in the same complex. No stranger to Queens, Santana had family members living in the pink houses also, 
popping round often to hang out but getting caught up in violence. It was during one such visit that he argued with Shaquem Boykins of the Loopy Gang, firing shots towards his legs according to his own testimony in court. The feds indicted both Santana and her husband on drug trafficking charges in 2018, which prompted Walls to cooperate with them, telling them what she knew before it was too late. Her bravery in snatching Miller's identification card when a confrontation between herself and infamous 9D gang members Malik Miller and Cheyenne Fernandez erupted became key evidence used against Miller in court. Miller was determined to get his revenge. And on July 7, 2020, Santana and Green carried out his plan. The investigation into her killing led detectives nowhere until alternative leads gave them insight into Miller, Wint, Fernandez, Green, and Bay, all of whom they somehow connected to the death of Walls. After a lengthy pursuit, Miller was apprehended and interrogated for his part in the execution. He denied any involvement but would not provide any information about those involved or their whereabouts. As justice crept closer to revealing itself, one thing was certain, the dark streets wouldn't be giving up its victims. His face hardened with vengeance upon learning that these five men were responsible for the heinous act of violence. Justice will be served for the innocent life taken too soon. Santana, Green, and Bay had all been part of Miller's 9D gang, and after much scrutiny from law enforcement, it became apparent that Miller had given Walls orders to be executed for snitching on her husband regarding drug trafficking charges. Green and Santana were already facing their destinies with others taking plea bargains on minor charges linked to the assassination. Miller had become notorious as the head of 9D criminal organization, scoping out targets beyond pink houses. Law enforcement persevered in the quest of justice, prodding deeper into 90s affairs and revealing what they found to the neighborhood. Anxiety was etched onto people's faces while they waited to see it return order to their area and quell this uproar. The mission to enforce justice intensified as police combed through evidence putting them on the right track, leading them from one crime scene to another, discovering bullet-riddled bodies and caches of drugs and money tucked away in forgotten buildings. The detectives conducted a thorough investigation, questioning anyone who could know something about 90s activities. Most of the answers were negative and furthered suspicion over the 9D gang's illegitimate doings. This sent the law running in multiple directions outside pink houses without any solid proof until an informant stepped forward to the investigators claiming he had knowledge connecting 9D with other gangs back home. They were all shocked, scared, but relieved at having confirmation of whom had to be toppled from power to restore tranquility. Be blessed, be loved, and stay safe, y'all.